Hello all you gals and gents that love some good old fashioned boomer shooters. This is Axolotl Aristotle and today I'm bringing you a review of a retro FPS game I've had my eye on for a while called Herat. I mean it's not like there are any other major YouTubers or media companies that review games. Especially indie games, this is, this is a totally 100% original idea I had and you should not question it. Right now, only the first chapter is available, entitled Kiss Me Gustav, which is weird because the only time there is smooching is when you kiss that lovely pixelated picture frame of him. Also, this video will contain spoilers for the game, including several bosses and in-game sequences. I'll offer a timestamp for the boss discussion in the description, and you can use that to skip those spoilers if you'd like. Otherwise, if you want to have a completely blind playthrough for yourself, I suggest you watch this video afterwards. I'll start off with the story, or rather the near lack of one that was prevalent in so many of our beloved shooters of yesteryear. In Herat, the plot seems to be akin to Tom Clancy's Division, except it doesn't attempt to take itself too seriously. Basically, you're someone who is trained to combat foreign invaders when the military failed. Cause you know. Citizens with zero combat experience are always able to topple opposing armies like they were kindergartners taking on paper mache. You might be wondering why these citizens aren't on the front lines of wars, and the answer to that question is quite simple really. The Geneva Convention. So you get ready to fight by donning the armor provided to you by the state. A non-functioning gas mask. Hey, um, Commander Petrov, don't you think giving us... Functioning equipment would help us to not, well, die? Is fine, comrade. Just hold breath, all will be well. But of course, no one plays throwback shooters extensively for the plot. That's like ordering a sundae just for the whipped cream on top. What matters most is the gameplay, aesthetics, and level design. Thankfully, Harad is mostly good in these categories. The basics are pretty simple. See terribly deformed person or horse and shoot. You always start off with a pistol and the sickles, which if you've played any FPS ever will know is pretty terrible and only a last resort weapon when everything else is out of ammo. Eventually you get your hands on a submachine gun, a shotgun, rocket launcher, landmines, some weird blunderbuss thing, and even a lightning gun. My first major gripe of the game comes from the armory actually. A minor note to start, Herat forces you to reload automatically whenever your clip runs out but you can't manually reload yourself. Sure, this might make it seem more realistic, but if you look at the HUD, you only get a total ammo capacity, not what's in your actual clip. The only weapon not affected by this is the shotgun. So you either waste bullets to have a full clip for the next fight, or take the risk of having to reload at a very inopportune moment and get hit by something you otherwise would have killed. Then there's the sound design of the weapons. It lacks any impact. They sound like pea shooters, and the damage the shotgun does always ends up surprising me. In addition, some of the weapons feel much weaker than they should, like the machine gun. Honestly, the pistol feels stronger, and on hotter difficulties when ammo is scarce, an entire machine gun mag could go into one enemy. The rocket launcher is as strong as you'd expect it to be, and the shotgun, as in every good FPS game, is beastly. Speaking of difficulty though, there is a real and very jarring difference between normal and hard. I had played the demo which felt difficult, so I started out on normal, and after two levels it felt way too easy so I bumped it back up to hard. Enemies have a massive increase in damage and the resources you get to deal with them feels much more scarce, or it could just have the same ammo for every single difficulty. Even if I was hitting them 100% of the time, it still felt like I wouldn't have enough ammo. Honestly, a decent patch would probably be to add more ammo in for the harder difficulties so the game becomes more about skill and less about extreme resource management and a really odd feeling with the reload mechanic. The next problem I had with the game are some of the movements and physics. For example, grenades are just bouncy balls that happen to explode. The number of times that I wasted them trying to open secrets was in the double digits, and right now I would guess the high 20s, and it will only increase the more I play. It also makes enemies like the Dirtle Turtles practically harmless because unless you stand in point blank range, they can't hit you. In addition, secrets are incredibly hard to find in this game. In fact, on my first playthrough it felt like I only found half of them. 
And I feel like this is in part to the use key. It feels like you have to be staring directly at the object or wall itself in order for it to be registered. And for me, it really slows the game down. I didn't really realize this until about halfway through, so I wonder just how many secrets I missed in the first half of the game because of it. Controls are your standard affair in an FPS game. Movement is W, A, S, and D. Space is jump. Shooting is left mouse. Weapons are one through nine. The issue I had comes with being unable to keybind my weapons. I found it really breaking the flow of combat when I had to stop moving in order to hit the key for the lightning gun or the landmines or the blunderbuss. Movement was fine. The character felt more like he was walking than running. The only real issue I had was when it came to jumping. I mean, look at that. I can jump higher than that. And I'm a nerdy philosopher. Harat, homie, how can you jump this high and yet still be able to climb the stairs? The game offers a good variety of enemies. You start off with your standard troopers armed with a pistol. You then get guys that look like the cleanup crews from Monsters, Inc. armed with shotguns. Watch out for them. They like to fall down and play dead and get back up. And you'll know you've killed them because they always drop ammo. You have the Dirtle Turtles I mentioned before, rats that are, well, rats, dogs, fish, a weird looking head thing that fires easy to dodge projectiles, but if you get hit by them, it turns your entire screen dark. You get the hound eyes out of Half-Life. I think they're supposed to represent pigs or maybe sheep. You have teleporting grunts that have machine guns, turrets which thankfully don't make appearances often and for whatever reason decide to bleed, and then that godforsaken horse that you've already seen which hits as hard as it gallops. Next is Suicidal Donkey Kong, and finally Helicopters that I thought were going to be really difficult, but ended up being, you know, pretty easy. Next up is bosses. The artistic design behind them is amazing, except for the generic spider boss, but the gameplay itself for them really felt subpar. First up you have a gorilla with twin rocket launchers for hands, because no one expects gorillas to have a ranged attack. It's easy enough to dodge them, and it goes down rather quick. It is the first boss after all. Next up is a possessed mechanical bull that for some reason resides in a high school gym, which also fires rockets at you. This boss appears before the horse and seems to have the same movement, but it's much slower than them. It seems like it's just a setup to get you used to the movement. Second to last you have Daddy Longlegs, which is just as disappointing as I said earlier. It's just a bigger spider that adds a web shooting attack, and it's definitely the worst boss on this list. Finally, you have Clement Gottweld. Uh, sorry about this, mate. Wait, am I sorry? You. As the final boss of Chapter 1, you'd expect him to be the toughest, yet the game generously offers you a lightning gun and a not-hard-to-find secret right before the fight. As expected, the aesthetics are amazing. The entire time you're walking towards the tower, you half expect the corpse to just start up after you. Then you look up and see it drilled into the ceiling, and it comes down to reveal its full glory. A half man, half spider that shoots explosive buzzsaws from its stomach. Bet you weren't expecting that, huh? Again though, his attacks aren't that hard to dodge, and you're given strong enough weapons to take care of him. Level design is one of Farad's biggest strengths. Thanks to the colored door locks, you always know where you need to go and how you're supposed to get there. Basic FPS stuff really, but it's nice to have. The only time it was an issue was in the second level. At the boss fight arena, you have to trigger it by shooting the gorilla, but I didn't know that. To me, it just looked like some really weird statue, so I spent 10 minutes bumbling around the map trying to find what I had missed. Despite the 50 shades of brown that Harat's color palette is based on, each level felt extremely distinct from one another. The varied locations are the game's strengths, from the castle, to the mausoleum, to even a culture center that contains a mall and some propaganda headquarters where I assume the leaders were trying to figure out how to rip off Captain America with something like Comrade Check. The degree of interactivity the game offers is just fantastic. I mean, look at this! You could turn lights on or off, or off in the more permanent sense and even ride a motorcycle that handles better than the one in Cyberpunk. Way to drop the ball again, CD Projekt Red. You see several running trains around, working radios, and the environment isn't war-torn. It really gives off the feeling of a lived-in environment where shit is just beginning to hit the fan and something unknown is happening. 
I think this is where people are making the equation of Herat equaling Dusk. Sure, the game does pay homage to it with its main menu screen, but the games are vastly different. Dusk wants extremely fast-paced combat with a banging industrial OST with creepy bits mixed in that slowly steal the show. Herat wants slower combat that feels oppressive, much like its dreary environment. Well, with the resource management and the odd reloading, there aren't even any intense heavy metal soundtracks that steal the show. That's a good thing. Not every game needs to be a Dusk or Doom clone to succeed. If I wanted to play Dusk or Doom, well, I'd go and play Dusk or Doom. All in all, I really loved and enjoyed Chapter 1. I mean, look what happens when you beat it. Instead of the traditional credit sequence, Herat gives you a recipe for beef stroganoff. How could anyone hate this? But because of the issues I mentioned earlier, I can only give Herat in its current state 7 out of 10 weh. Should you buy it? Absolutely! In fact, I really hope that with the release of patches and new chapters, the negative aspects of my review become outdated. Because honestly, I really want the developers and the game to succeed. Thank you for watching. I'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, or dislike it if you didn't. If you did or didn't, please leave a comment with your critique. I welcome it and want to know how to improve my content. If you'd like to support this channel, I also have a Patreon with numerous tiers and rewards. I'll leave a link in the description and comments. Making videos like these are so much fun. With your support, I'd love to make them on a more consistent basis.